Now, viramine can also cause hepatitis, and again, hepatitis we talked about earlier is can be due to viruses, but in this scenario, it can be due to the medication. Now, hepatitis, when patients develop hepatitis, they will likely feel something. So often they may have flu-like symptoms, they may have abdominal pain. You may notice that their eyes look a bit yellowish or their skin looks a little yellowish or jaundice. You have to pay particular attention to people who already have underlying hepatitis from either virus, virus, for example, hepatitis C or hepatitis B. In addition, there are certain situations where this medication would not be used and because of the higher risk. So here's two situations. Women who have a CD4 count above 250, you generally we don't want to use this medication at that point. And men who have a CD4 count above, above 400. Now I want to clarify that this is only upon initiation of medication. So if the patient started the, the medication and their CD4 count start going above these threshold values, it doesn't mean you need to stop the drug. It's just on initiation you have to be aware of this. Now again, as Elta mentioned, it is important to have their lab tests, and this is one particular one where you do want to have the patients come back and monitor their liver function tests two weeks monthly and then for the for monthly for the first three months and then periodically after that. Okay, so Steva, so Steva, when you usually think of side effects, you think about CNS side effects. That's what I call it, it's claim to fame. Now, you may have dizziness or drowsiness. So one of the ways that you would actually help do that is give the dose at bedtime. Now remember, does everyone go to bed at the same time? Let's say some people work third shift, some people work first shift. Is a bedtime the same for everybody? No, it's not. So make sure that you stress is upon the patient's bedtime don't just go and say, take it at 9 p.m. when you go to bed. The patient may not go to bed till 9 a.m., for example. All right? Now, it also has very vivid dreams. Now, vivid dreams can be good depending on what you're dreaming about. Now, for example, if you're dreaming about Angelia Jolie and Brad Pitt, that might be a very good dream. If you're dreaming about me naked, that may be a very bad dream depending on what you think. So needless to say, it's very vivid dreams. Now these uh, very vivid dreams, usually adverse effects, usually uh, decrease after two to four weeks. So uh, just be very cognitive of the patients. I've had patients tell me they had very colorful dreams and it was a great thing, right? Okay, and I've had some patients tell me they had vivid, uh, very vivid, icky things that, and that wasn't that great either. So, but after a while, it usually does reduce, okay? Now, if you, uh, these can have agitation, hallucinations, euphoria, so patients who have mental health issues, you need to make sure that you're monitoring and help getting with them. Like I said, remember that hand holding. Make sure that they're there so if they have any problems, you can coordinate with the physician and see if there's anything you need to do. Uh, if all these things that, uh, consist, then you may have to switch therapy, but hopefully you can help them manage through. Now, there's one thing that you can do is with Sestivas, you can recommend not taking it with food. So that helps reduce some of the CNS side effects because food actually improves the absorption of this medication. And with increased absorption, you can also have increased toxicity. So don't take a Big Mac right when you go to bed with your sestiva. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, remember that. Okay. So now, also remember, sestiva can have a rash, and it can go all the way from a very mild to all the way to Stephen Johnson, just like we talked with Viramune. Hepatotoxic hepatotoxicity can help. Increase in total cholesterol and HDL levels. Uh, now, this is one I find very, very important especially in today's economy. It can cause a false positive marijuana and benzodiazepine. Name me a benzo. What's, what's a benzo? Xanax, Valium. Now if you're going for a job and the employer is going, oh my gosh, you're taking marijuana, you don't get the job. Is that very important? Yes, it is. That's very important. So the doctor can write a note saying, hey, the patient may have a false positive test for marijuana and volume or benzos okay you don't have to tell the drug they just say it might be a false positive however I have had patients ask me does this mean I can smoke marijuana all the time now because I can get a note from my doctor the answer is no you cannot test to see is it the sustiva causing it or the marijuana causing it so make sure that you do stress that to patients because they think that's a free pass also this is category D for pregnancy Sestiva and pregnancy do not mix, do not use. And if a woman is on Sestiva and she's thinking about becoming pregnant, you need an advisor. If you're going to get pregnant, keep in touch with your physician, notify them, let us know, let us coordinate you because you can't be on Sestiva 
while you're pregnant. Also, is that true also with breast milk? You can't breast breastfeed while on placebo? Does it go through? Yeah. Okay, so that's true too you after you have the baby. So those are things that you need to know. But in HIV patient mothers, we often, d right. we don't recommend breastfeeding regardless. That's right. Does everybody understand that? That's what I've got about that. In Intellence is one of the newer products in this category, and it's what we call a next generation NNRTI. And only we label it that way because some of the resistance that you see with with the other medications, you may not see with this medication. And when we talk about resistance, we're talking about viral resistance. So it does, however, have very similar side effects like the other one. So skin rash, maybe a hypersensitivity reaction, and nausea. Again, we've gone through most of these things, and this drug, as we learn more and more about it, it's relatively new, we may have other things to tell you about in future events. Now, the last drug we want to mention this evening is the one called Fusion. Now, Fusion, if you remember, came out maybe four, four, four years ago or so, and it was a very, very useful medication when it did come out because it, was, it worked a lot different than the medications we had at the time. However, one of the th few things that it does also came with this medication is something called injection site reaction. Now, if you, this medication is the only one that's given as a subcutaneous injection. Now, everything else is given either is generally given by mouth. Now, the injection site reactions can look similar to this. It's hard to tell over here, but you can see a little bit of a blemish. So it can be a little bit reddish, a little purplish there. It could be painful, it can be indurated. Certainly if you don't teach your patients how to inject this medication using sterile technique, they can have an abscess. All right. So these are very important side effects that patients will, can and like may, may uh, complain about. Now how do we manage this? Well a few things. One is that again you have to teach the patient how to do, how to draw the medicine, how to reconstitute it, and then how to draw it out with sterile technique. Secondly, you want to make sure that the patients don't keep injecting themselves at the same site over and over again. That's what definitely they're going to have an injection site reaction. So they want to move it around, so around their abdomen, behind their arms, maybe on their thighs. All right. You want to avoid injecting into areas that are already that have existing nodules or cysts. After they inject, you can tell the patient to massage the area either with their hands or maybe with a, uh, a vibrator that, that would help a massager a I'm not touching that Manish yeah you did Manish I'm not touching it I'm not sure it, it was a hand massager you know the hand kind of massager, yeah, not, a yeah, that, not a vibrator so I did that purposely but this is a family <laughs> show come on All right. <laughs> he thought that would come from me ha ha see it was him you want me to go out? You, no, you, okay, fine. can you handle You can recover? <laughs> so, I'm so proud of you. Um, yeah. Fingers and electric massager. I should read my screen. <laughs> and then also allow the medication. If, sometimes what we do is we teach our patients to make two shot, two injections, and we keep one of them in the refrigerator. And, of course, if you inject cold medicine, it irritates the skin even more. So what you can do is tell the patient to take it out of the refrigerator, 30 or 40 minutes before they're going to inject, they let it get to room temperature, and then they inject that medication. And then, finally, if none of these things work, the product comes with a 27 gauge needle. And what we have learned along the way is that if you choose a needle that's thinner, so a 30 gauge or 31 gauge, that may help the patient out. Now, of course, that would the 30 or 31 gauge does not come with the product, so the physician or provider would have to write a new prescription. And then you'd have to tell the patient what to do with the, uh, the stuff that does come with the medication. But that can also help. Now there's two other side effects that we should just generally go over real quickly. Bacterial pneumonia, which is something that was seen in more of the clinical trials, but this is something where patients may have a fever, a cough, or shortness of breath. Certainly it can be treated if it happens. And then a hypersensitivity reaction, again, very similar to what we've already talked about. So fever, rash, chills, may have elevations in their liver enzymes. Again, rechallenging. If this happens, we don't rechallenge in this scenario as well.